Hi everyone, I was having a look through all my colouring books and I realised that this book here um, by Charlie's Hand Colouring Book Volume 3 I had not coloured anything in. Um, it's a beautiful book that I got for my birthday and uh, I think because I'm so lucky to have so many it, it just slipped me past me by so I thought I would have a go at it today. It's a really fun picture. It's quite simple but I think it doesn't mean we can't have a really fun time with it. I'm using my Derwent Chromaflow um, pencils. Um, I'm just grab them. It's not. Whoops! I didn't sort of. I wasn't planning anything specific with them on this page. I just thought I would grab them and have a go. Um, so I've got um, just the 24. I say just. That's plenty. And I think we'll start with this bit here at the top, and we'll come in a bit closer so I can show you. I think it'll be easier. Now I've been thinking about the background. I'm not going to do anything around the edge of the page but within the um, light bulb we've got all this background. I've been thinking about that so I will tell you about that in a moment. I'm just going to start. Um, I'm going to use the black. Now in the Chroma Flow we only have two. We have this platinum grey. You can see how very light it is compared to the black. So I'm actually, even though I want this to look metallic and grey, I need to use the black to start with or else we won't get um, much of a contrast between dark and light so I'm going to just go around the edge with the black to start with and then we'll play I'll show you and the same on the other side now we have got a shine line drawn here and here on black in black but we can um, go over that in white um, if you could um, color this in silver in if you use a silver Posca pen because it's acrylic paint you will lose all these lines they will just vanish but if you use a silver gel pen you're more likely to find that it will remain slightly see-through and so you can still see the lines but I'm obviously going for the pencil route I'm hoping this is going to work um, just hoping really that the derwents are going to blend up nicely for me so I'm just extending that black a little bit you can see and I need to fade it quite a lot um, quite quickly because I want to leave a little bit of white in the center so it looks shiny so we can so I'm just gonna do a really gentle bit like that now I do want to put some shadows in in a bit with the black, but I think I'm going to use my grey next. Now this is quite uneven, I to say. It's going to take a bit of fiddle-faddling. It's an official term, fiddle-faddling. <laughs> right, I'm going to grab my grey and see what I can do. So this is called Platinum. Now if you've got a bigger set of Chroma Flow, you may have a darker grey which you could have used instead of a black and it might sort of blend up better but so uh, you can see they blend nicely it's all coming together and then just take some grey further out towards the middle it's just going to take a bit of time to work those colours together they're not um, natural because um, they're not so close in tone but what we can do once we've done this is we can use the Derwent blending pencil which I think I've got in here no oh I've only got a Caran d'Ache oh well um, the Derwent one works very well with Derwent pencils because obviously that's what it's designed to do I may have to go and grab one and uh, that can be our friend in this situation so I'm just adding the grey and then I want to fade it towards the middle. I think I'm been I'm not very good at getting my pressures quite right on these pencils today to get a nice even mixture. But I'm gonna go and grab a blender. Couldn't find my Derwent blending pencils so I got my Derwent blending pens. These have got blending fluid in them and uh, they are very effective I find. Obviously I've not tried them on this paper. I say obviously, you don't know. Well I haven't used, done this book, used this book yet so maybe it's a bit obvious, I don't know. Now it leaves a wetness on the paper which will fade and it does go through that oily wetness 
but again as I say it will fade and there is a smell um, these don't smell the same as I like the smell of the zest it blenders quite a lot but these aren't so pleasant but because um, they're okay though you probably should use them in an aerated air room which I'm not um, which would probably help but uh, anyway now what you find is that the colour will stain the end you can see it's actually stained with a different colour and it's always best to just rub them on a bit of rough paper as you finish using them so that you um, don't stain them some colours you can't rub off but you know I'm going to go back in with my black and just try and even out the black. Now with the blending solution on the page it makes that a bit easier. I'm also going to add in where I want to put shadow which is under here and here. I want to make it look as if that bit is slightly set in. just doing one side at a time really. I know I did that shadow all the way across but and I'll take that shadow all the way across. Now the top bit which I haven't done yet on an old-fashioned, see this is quite an old-fashioned type of light bulb um, they tend to be gold in colour I don't know if they're actual gold, some electrical components are, aren't they? But so we'll try and see what we can do to make a sort of gold colour. Having a look at what we've got. Mm. Interesting selection of colours, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm just going to try and extend that out a little bit. I have um, sometimes made grey completely with just a black pencil before because um, having I've got a set with no grey in and just a black, no white either. And you, can, you can just adjust the pressure on the pencil and, uh, and effectively make grey because we've got a grey as well. This is now the grey, it's called platinum actually, I guess because it's so light sort of silvery now when you leave a white bit you don't always want it to show as completely white if you bring your colour very faintly together but leave a little bit of white that doesn't obviously look white but the eye can still see it I don't know if I'm making any sense and then it still gives that shine look without it looking like you've just got a big white stripe I'm just going to go back in with the black here because that looks a bit messy there we go I'm going to leave that there I think it looks shiny which was the plan and the top bit Right, let's just pop those pencils over there, being very noisy. Now we could do a slight cheat on our gold, or we could just, let's, let's do it a very small, quick gold demo. So we're using the natural brown first, this will be our darkest colour. We use a little bit here, whoops, and fade it, and a little bit there, and fade. Then we'll use this colour which is the um, Burnt Sienna and we go over the top of that brown and bring that slightly further in like that then we will grab the Golden Sun again going right over the top bring it slightly further in it's going to be quite a, sh a shiny um, sort of vibrant gold and then the amber gold. You could just use the amber gold. Now we've got a bit of a white here. I want a white line but not too big so I'm just going to gently bring that in side to side until we've just got the smallest bit of shine. There we go, there's our gold. It's 
probably a lot brighter. So I'm just trying to move my pencils out of the way. Um, it's probably a bit brighter than we would normally see. Now we're on to our main picture. So I have, I'm not revealing all of it very well at the minute. So we've got a rocket with fire and this. Moon, UFO, planets and the Earth and stars. and Satellite? I'm a spaceman. Now I've been thinking about the background. I thought a black Posca might work, but I want to be able to see these lines through. So I've decided that maybe a blue felt tip pen might be better. Now I don't, I rarely do felt tip pen backgrounds because they get all stripy. What I'm gonna try and do is use this dark blue here. These are um, Stedler Triplus pens. And do a round and round movement on the paper to try to stop any lines. Now I don't know whether it's going to go through the paper or not. So it's a bit of a risk, but I'm going to try it, but not now, later. We're going to do the detailing first, but I'm just being aware of the colour that the background is going to be, which is a dark blue. So we don't want to do anything here dark blue. We need it all to stand out from the dark blue. So I'm going to start with the rocket because I think it's good fun. I'm going to do it red. And in our set here, we have a scarlet, which I think will work really nicely. Um, and I just, let's get going. So darker on the edge, like that and that. Now you could, don't have to do your whole rocket the same colour. I think I am. I think the style of this drawing sort of lends itself to big bold areas. So I'm going to just make it a little lighter in the middle so that it looks shiny and it would also help it to look more rounded. So I'm just layering up around the edge on both sides and then less as we go in. Now I haven't used this paper before, it feels quite smooth to the touch. I can see there's a bit of tooth. As I reduce my pressure, I can see white paper, but I'm quite happy with um, how it, the pencils feel really soft on the paper, which is nice. They seem to suit these, it seems to suit these chroma flows. I think I've picked well um, with regards to the brand that I'm using. I don't know, as I say, how well it's going to work with pen, but we'll find out. And it's thickish paper. So I'm hoping it will stand up to it. And if it doesn't, I will just have to be inventive with what I do on the back. Which I'm sure I can be. Never had to do that before. I've never had bleed through the page, which I've had to try and cover up. But I know people do. There are lots of ways to do it, incorporate it into the picture somehow. And I'll show you what happens. I mean, often you find with many books, you can do a layer of pen, but once you start doing more than one, it doesn't like it. And because I'm going to be doing this sort of round and round colouring, it means I'll be putting a lot of layers on, so it may not stand up to it. But we'll see. Fire. I usually start fire with red, but I'm not going to because we've got a red ship. So I'm going to start it with um, the flame, which is the orange. And I'm sort of going to ignore the drawing and just do orange at the bottom and then fade it like that. And the drawing will just shine through and look pretty. And then we're going to whoops, go for the amber gold, which we have already used for our gold top. But it's a, such a pretty colour. It works so well for fire, I think, and just fade it so we've got room for one last colour. Um, I'm going to use this sun yellow just to brighten that bit there. Look, now we've got um, out of here, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. So I had thought about doing that as a rainbow, but we haven't got enough colours um, and it would be smoke so maybe we'll do grey and black stripes so we use the platinum let's just push up so you can see we use the platinum here for the outside 
because remember we've got the although that's white we've got this blue background here and what I'm going to do is do every other one platinum and black I'm not doing any shading on this it's just a solid line because it's quite difficult the platinum is so light it's quite hard to shade with it unless you use the black because we're using black on the other one which I'm going to use quite lightly to try to make it look like grey I don't know how well I'll manage but I'll show you in a minute so there's our grey grab the black which is the um, black 21 and what I'm going to do is just use it lightly so to get a light touch you hold the pencil further down the barrel so I'm not holding it down here I'm holding it further away tip it on its side don't have it too sharp if you can I mean obviously if you've just sharpened it and it sh you can't really blunt it but if you use the side of it it'll work and it just looks a little lighter than a black obviously we've got a lot of white paper showing through which helps us you could um, put some white on top to I'm happy with it like that okay so there's our mm, bit there but we need to do this stripe I had thought about doing it white but I've got red all over it because you know because it's me so I think I'm going to do it black but grey so a little bit darker here and then fade it a bit so it looks like hopefully a dark grey now it's going to look black like that and the window in a similar way so quite dark on each side and then less towards the top and bottom leaving a little gap to look make it look shiny as if it's metallic and then we're going to use our grey um, the platinum to um, do the window now I'm going to hmm, colour it in just completely in grey I think quite solid it's got some shine marks on there and I might be able to use a white pen to bring those out it may not show up okay let's move on we've got the earth and the moon now we've got water now we could do our water I would always be tempted to do it in a very dark blue because that's how the earth looks from space we've got a dark blue um, sky coming so I'm going to do it in the turquoise green which is quite a different sort of color but I think it will stand out a lot more even if I did a light blue I think it might get a bit lost we might do some blue now we've got the other planets in this picture and I'm not really have got no idea what color to color them um, we could look it up and do it accurately um, or not <laughs> I haven't quite decided um, I'm trying to think because obviously Mars is red I'm trying to think whether I would be able to remember I think were the see this is in the wrong place we're, we're here this is the Sun surely in the planets why are we here I'm confused we've just got some posts through the door I've got to go and investigate hold on a minute right I uh, I've just straightened up the picture I realized how squiffy we were yeah I had some nice post um, I had a letter from a friend which I shall ha open and read later so that was lovely and uh, and some birthday cards for my boys it was their birthday um, a few days ago when this video goes out it would have been a month ago they've forgotten all about it I'm sure now I'm always um, not sure whether to do the land green or blue but I think I do it green more so it'll look very uh, I don't mean green or blue I mean green or yellow I'm sorry I'm going to do it in the basil um, it's quite dark and with this I haven't done any shading kept it quite simple while I was away getting the post I got a tablet to look up the color of the planets so I can have a vague go at it I mean I don't know if the site I found is completely accurate I'm sure it's not but I thought it'd be uh, we could have a go now of course the poles aren't really going to be green are they be white but this is just a rough and fun representation if you wanted to make this more spherical, I shall show you, 
No, I can't do it. Do it a little bit darker around the edge and lighter towards the middle with what with a, a grey. Don't have one. What we could do, actually we could use a dark brown. I've got a dark brown. No. Um oh yeah, there's a dark brown. Use the dark brown on the land, so the natural brown on the edges of the land. Just bring that in a bit. Now just shadow it a bit. And on the water, we'll just use a blue, which I was trying to avoid, but we'll just use a little bit. So this is the denim, which is the darkest blue. Oh, I'm doing a little bit. Just like that and let's fade it. My desk is clunking today. There we go. Just a little bit. Give it a little bit of shape. It also makes it look a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? Right. And now I'm getting my page from the tablet. It's a kid's poster. Ten facts about the solar system. But the sun in the middle. I think I knew that. <laughs> and I'm just going to do it really bright yellow. So this is our brightest yellow. It's actually called sun yellow. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So we're going to do that bright yellow then we've got this little planet which is mercury i suspect in my picture mercury is colored yellow and brown so i'm thinking i might use the golden sun it's a little bit lighter yes it's striped but i'm going to keep it just plain like that then i think this is probably hmm I think this is probably Venus. Yeah. And Venus is orange in this picture. I'm just going to stick with the picture. So I'm going to use the flame for Venus. Make it very bright. Now this is a slightly bigger planet. So I can hopefully get a little bit of shading on this. To make it darker on the outside. And then slightly less layers in the middle to make it look a bit more rounded. Can even leave a little bit of white in that center area to uh, really emphasize that sh spherical shape. Now our big one will be Jupiter. Now Jupiter is colored a sort of pale yellow light brownie color. I don't want to make it the same <coughs> excuse me as any of the other planets so I'm actually going to use um, the natural brown. Um, yeah. Of course, Earth is missing because it's down at the bottom, so it's not completely accurate. I'm trying to work out if that's Mars or if that's Mars, and where Neptune and Uranus at Saturn. Obviously, it's got its rings. I think there's another planet with rings though, but they we don't see them. But I'm not the uh, I'm not the best at this stuff. My son was interested in it. When he did GCSE physics, there was a tiny bit on the planets which he was really interested in, but they missed it out of the curriculum teaching because um, because school was shut. They could reduce how much they taught and examine them on, and they missed out. It was only three pages in the textbook. They missed it out, but he read it through. But uh, he's doing physics A level, but I don't think they cover this sort of thing. I don't know. He's having fun with it anyway. So I'm just trying to make it a little darker on the edge and in the middle. There we go. So, Saturn, Mars, or Neptune? Hmm. I think we'll do this one as Mars. I don't know. It's got craters in it. I don't know. And Mars is obviously red. So we're going to do Mars in scarlet. No. Do Mars in the strawberry. Just so it's a different colour to the rocket. If we do Mars up there, it'll be a bit further away from that red. Yeah, we do this one. as, mm, But that one's closer. Mars is closer, isn't it? We do it. Try and hope that's the one's Mars. <laughs> How indecisive. I 
on the side. So again, I'm trying to layer up on the outside. This paper is lovely and smooth. It's really nice for colouring on in pencils. And these are nice pencils, obviously Derwent. It's a good brand, although their studio and their artist ranges I find be a little bit hard. I'm sort of ignoring those craters, they would be darker. So I think what I'm going to do is grab this raisin colour, which is a sort of reddish brown, and just put a bit of extra colour in them, like that. There we go, they look a bit darker and they still look red. So this one, have we done, even done Venus? Yeah, that's Venus, isn't it? Um, we see this is Neptune, it's blue. So if I do a light blue, I can't get it out of the tin. Oh, wants to run away. This is the light blue. We'll do this in light blue. It will stand out from the blue background. And my tablet's going to sleep. I can't see my pictures anymore. So again, more colour around the outside. Turned itself off. There we go. Now Saturn is also a yellowy brown colour. I'm trying to choose one that's a bit different. That was the natural brown. I think um, maybe we'll use the burnt sienna um, for this one. It's got these circles which are quite cool. I don't know what to do with those. But we'll just get our base colour down. In my picture, the rings are slightly lighter shades. So we'll do that in a minute. Now we've got all these dots. My plan is to do the background, these dots, I mean, like the orbits. My plan is to do the background and then to draw in the dots with a silver pen. I think it would look pretty cool. I'm using the word cool a lot. My children recoil in horror. Mother, you can't use that word. You're too old. Um, so rings, we'll do them in this colour, which is the um, golden sun colour. Because we didn't do the sun in this colour. I think we did that one in it, didn't we? I'm not sure now. I can't remember. Time has passed. <laughs> I'm just going to remove that bit of wood from there. It's really irritating me. There we go. It probably was you as well. There we go. Okay. Now let's move ourselves up. Oh, my tablet's on my book. So we've got a UFO. Now I know Martians are supposed to be green, but I'm thinking a green UFO could be fun. Um, I don't know why. So I'm going to, I've got this grass screen, but we've got these circles, which I think we could do as lights, and this might be like a window. Um, if we do, it's, gonna, it's quite intricate, I'm just going to sharpen, because it's, it's quite small. There we go. The sharpening's all over the desk. Um, if we do the sun yellow for the lights... like that they don't really show up do they and then this grass green for the main bit so they sharpen it they don't always like their sharpener they like the um the derwent sharpener but i haven't got that in here so i'm trying to going to fade it a bit as we go towards the middle of this bit so a bit darker here lots of layers I'm trying to avoid those little yellow bits and a bit less here just gives it a bit of um, shape and interest and I think I'm just going to do this one in green oh the sun's coming out is that casting it's not casting too much of a sh oh there we go nice big shadow um we'll do these bits and if it's still creating a shadow I'll shut the blind I don't know if it's got its forecast to stay out for very long it's very off-putting, isn't it? We've got this um, comet. Now, I'm thinking it, the centre of the comet, I think it's like a rock, but I'm thinking maybe black and for this circle. But I'm going to 
try and make it look spherical by doing it harder around the edge and a bit less as we go to the centre, less. So I did quite a few layers on the edge and now I'm doing less. Like that. And then around the edge, I'm thinking maybe that fire would be very bright on the edge and then maybe yellow in the middle. So I'll grab my flame. Yeah, the sun's gone back in, back in now. It's very cloudy. So I'm going to do this flame all the way around the edge. Like that. And then my next, my sort of yellowy orange, which is the amber gold for the bit in here. It doesn't really look massively flame-like, not like this, but I think it'd be okay. Now the moon. Now, moon white? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe grey might be a better idea. So we've got our platinum here. I think I'm going to go over it really lightly in a grey. And then these areas that are marked a little bit darker. Like that. There we go. Quite simple. Oh, I'm going to keep this platinum in my hand for this, um, this spaceman sort of view. Now, spacesuits, are they normally very white? Maybe with a few bits of blue or red on? I don't want to use blue. I've got a lot of red going on as well, but maybe if he's come out of a red spaceship, maybe he's got a red spacesuit. I'm a bit worried about what he's attached to and where his rocket's going. And what I'm going to do is just do a few red bits because normally, as I said, their suits are quite white. So I'm just going to do a few bits of red in a few areas like that and leave the rest white. And this cable again will be in silver. Now these stars, we haven't done that moon, have we? Is that not that moon? We'll use the platinum again while I remember and just colour this in, our sun's coming back out colour it in lightly and do those craters a bit darker now, let me just move oh. I'll move across a bit out of the sun we've got these stars, that's some of the plough I'm going to do them in the amber gold Okay. There is it. I find that orangey yellow stands out more than just uh, plain yellow. Now I'm not sure what to do with the clouds here. I'm actually going to do the background first and then decide whether they need anything. And we have this satellite. Now I would do this if I had one in a grey, uh, dark grey. But I don't so I'm going to do it in black. But I'm going to do it lightly. like that. I assume that's a satellite. Who knows? Right, so that is the main bit done. I'm going to go away and do my felt tip pen. I'll just start off so you can see. So what I'm doing is rather than going ch -ch -ch or ch -ch -ch, I'm going to go like this, round and round. And I think this will give me a more even looking background. Okay. And let's have a look. Nope, it's not. Th it's not gone through the page. Okay. Oh, the sun. So I'm going to stop the video and finish that. Cause it's going to be really boring, and then come back and show you. Right, I am back. Um, I have only done one layer of pen. It gives quite a textured look. Um, my colouring hasn't. It was quite neat at the beginning and then it got messier. I'm sure um, the same happens to everyone. Now, if you've done this, you might want to put another layer on top or even two. What I did in the back um, on the oops, on the test page is I did one layer, two layers, three layers to see how it managed through the paper. You can see there's no bleed through. Um, it might be difficult to see. There's a little bit of ghosting. I think you can see that. And obviously it gets more severe as we go along. 
but really three layers and I I stopped at three because I could start to feel the paper roughing up that side that those two are fine but this one a bit of the paper was coming away you can see where I've rubbed it a few crumbs will come off that you know it gets too wet so I would say two layers probably max but you might just get away with three and because you're going round and round you're actually already layering up a few times anyway in some areas but part of the reason I've left it I don't mind this textured look personally but also I need to be able to see the black underneath to um, fill in the um, the um, the sort of um, orbits and things that are drawn on here which I'm struggling to see anyway um, because I had to shut the blind it's quite dark in here now um, if you would like a darker layer and you're worried about losing these details take a photo with your phone or whatever of the page partly colored and then you can you'll be able to see and you can just draw it on that's if you're confident I don't know if I'd have the confidence to do that personally but you know now tip with the coloring I did start from the top and work downwards now felt pen which this is it's just a tripless color st Stedler pen it does dry quite quickly but you can still put your hand on it and get a bit on your hand and smudge it and sort of print it down the page I've done it before it's not ideal now we're going to be adding on now some pen um, I'm going to use these jelly rolls metallic pens I think they're just perfect for this picture in a minute now these don't dry very quickly so you would definitely want to either work from left to right or top to bottom just or just diagonally across so you don't smudge it around before I do that though I'm going to deal with this cloud area now I hadn't coloured it in because I thought I would wait and just see how it all looked with the um, background and uh, I pretty much decided what I'm going to do let's go in a bit closer now I had thought about greys but we've got the greys here and it's a bit boring I'm actually going to do some pink clouds I picked this blush pink I think it's quite vibrant and um, what I'm going to do is try and do it lightly now I know clouds aren't pink but this is a fantasy picture and I just thought it would look pretty and why not so I'm going to sort of do a darker bit here I hope you can see and then just fade it towards the edge of the cloud it's sort of idea I get from um, Rita Berman and um, when she colours clouds um, she does it like this I can um, some other colourists do as well and sort of fade it up as best you can so it looks whiter on the edge I think it just looks you know fun I'm actually although these have got dotted edges and this one's solid as if there may be supposed to be smoke I'm going to do them in the same way I think it'll just look pretty to have this sort of bunch of pink clouds at the bottom and uh, I do it's quite good doing it now because I'm just giving my felt tip pen time to dry because I work from top to bottom this bit down here might still be a little wet it doesn't it really takes very little time at all um, I think it's Johanna Basford's method is to put this bit of your hand down and then check and see if there's any mark on your hand and you'll know if it's dry um, I'm pretty confident it's dry um, but she recommends using that bit of your hand rather than a fingertip and the reason is because your fingertips can get quite greasy whereas that bit of your hand tends not to but do make sure it's clean first because you may have dipped it in something else you know on your page I'm often getting bits of pen on that part of my hand but then you know I'm quite quite messy and clumsy there we go just really simple and um, that bit looks a little bit odd hang on there we go but I think it just looks quite fun so let's um now I re I'm finding it really struggling with seeing what's going on I shall do my best so I'm getting out my jelly rolls I've got the silver I've got the sort of black um and the gold um that might be all we need I think so I'll pop those to the side I will decide later now I'm trying to see I don't really want to move it out of shot yeah I can just about see so there are dots coming out of here They're not showing up particularly well for me I think they oh yeah they are now start to get going mm. 
I have to keep tipping my head, the light actually reflects off the black print so it helps me to be able to see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my blind and I'll be able to see much better but it's going to make horrible shadows on the page. I think you can see what I'm doing, I'm just following the lines that are there. I'm going to open my blind and do this without, not on camera, just because I'll be able to see better and if I do it on camera it will look really messy so I'll be back. Right, I have done that and it's quite tricky to see. The sun went in while I was doing it. It's probably pop out now I'm recording again, um, just to uh, be annoying. <laughs> but I did the orbits of the planets. I don't know how well you can see them in this light. And I did the um, this piece on the spaceman and this orbit and these stars. Now the orbits of the planets I did in this colour which is hashtag 549, it's a slightly oops, blacky colour. I did the silvery colour for this bit and I used the gold for the stars. I outlined each star and did the dots. There are a few other bits I'd like to do and I can see them better so I thought I would do them with you. On the moon here we've got these um, craters and things. I quite like to do the um, dots here, this is the silver, this is the number 553, this is the metallic silver, I just thought it would be rather fun to make it sort of shiny, like this. It's always just fun isn't it, adding some shine, and we could do a bit on that one but they're not dotted so I think I'm going to leave it, and I thought I might do a few dots along here, along this sort of smoke, and being very conscious of the fact that I could easily put my hand in this bit which might still be wet so I'm trying not to I know so there are I know people who don't use gel pens simply because they often smudge them and I can quite understand that you do have to be a bit careful and I'm not the most careful person as you know so I have smudged them before now I can take it in my stride but some people I know would get quite upset um, if they spoiled their work with a bit of a smudge. So, you know, just think about what's going to be good for you. And the sun's come out and it's going to put a big shadow across the page. <laughs> Thank you, sun. It's one of those days. It's going in and out. It's going back in now. OK. Now, I had thought about doing something on Saturn's rings and Saturn, but then I thought... I did it on that I'd probably have to do it on the other planets and it might just get a little bit too much so I thought I wouldn't do that what I will do though there's a pink and I'm just going to edge the clouds with it here is the pink it is number 520 and I thought I'd just dot it along the edges of the clouds because we've got this sort of dots drawn on and that'll sort of be the last bit really I think. You can fiddle and faddle for ages and uh, you know it's fun but on the other hand if you just want it to be a touch then you could overdo it. It depends what how much you actually want um, shiny and showing up and how much you don't. I thought that if I did them across this one as well it would just sort of tie the clouds together because they're drawn in a slightly different way but I want to, them to look like they're the same if that makes sense maybe it does, maybe it doesn't so we're nearly done it's a fun image this I've enjoyed colouring it in there we go now we've got a big tripod shadow across the page I shall shut the blind just so you can see oops, my blind doesn't want to shut there we go so that you can see the finished thing properly. Here it comes. It's going to go quite black for a minute once it. Oh, oh no, and the light will hopefully adjust for you. Let's straighten up a little bit and then you can see. So those three are pens were from this set. Um, but of course, you oh, four pens, sorry. But you can use any pens you want, or you could just use silver or and gold because they're the most common. And metal metallic pens for people to have. Um, this was the Stedler pen. I like the Stedler because the fine liners match so if you are doing fine detail and you struggle, although I didn't, I found it was quite easy 
um because the nib is quite small um although it's splitting a little bit um you can um, use the fine liner for some of the bits and it will all match in and um obviously the chroma flow derwent chroma flow pencils as well so that is us done um i hope that was fun it's a little bit different i don't know how many of you have this book but i thought you know i'd give it a go because i thought it was fun and i can just show you how to mix up different you know mixed media picture and if you wanted a background what i would do for a background was actually do clouds in i probably wouldn't use a pink because we've got that there i'd probably use a cloud stencil and do bl light blue um with with a soft pastel but i don't think it needs one i think it really stands up off the page without a background and sometimes it's better just to do a picture without one um i know some people always do a background some people feel worried and think they should do what's right for you what you think works with the picture and what you want to do at the time you can come back and do backgrounds later if you're not in the mood for them or just leave it you know i think that jumps off the page because of the white background it doesn't really need one so there we go i shall stop talking now um thank you so much for watching i hope that was okay um i had fun i hope you did um i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy coloring <laughs>